I've been locked up so many times in my life. It's kind of crazy. I started serving time in 1981 as an adult, and since then, up until recently, I've been incarcerated numerous times off and on in the prison system. During that period of time, I've seen some really crazy things. You know, there's so many things that I could tell you guys about, man. That's crazy, it's unbelievable, the things that I've experienced. Being incarcerated, man, and, and being around so many, I don't know, hard heads, you know, continuously day after day, things get real crazy inside the prison system. You know, I've thought about some really crazy stories, man, and things that I'd like to share with you guys. But um, I think first I want to start with my weird experiences at Greensville and, and the robberies and extortion. I got a robbery charge um, in 2001, and uh, that jacked my level up, my security level up, so I had to be in a maximum security prison. So Greensville is a maximum security prison, and I went there, and um, I served five years at Greensville, and during that five years, man, I, I had some really crazy times. I've seen a lot of crazy shit. I got my robbery charge um, in 2001. I was really I was really dope sick uh, that morning. It was in the morning time, and it was early, like when the diners were first opening up. So I went in this breakfast diner, and I robbed them for some money to go get some dope with. I, I thought I got away with it. This, of course, that's one of the things that you always think. And then, like two months later, the police were knocking at the door where I was living at, looking for me. That's when I got locked up, went to Chesapeake Jail. Got sentenced to 18 years, and with uh, 10 years suspended, I had eight years to serve. During that eight years of incarceration is where I spent my time at Greensville at. When I first got to Greensville, I got off the prison bus, and uh, we were like, we were taken into a, a room, and then after taking into the room, they did a whole bunch of paperwork and things of that nature. And then they sent us to our buildings where we were going to be housed at. But once I got to my housing unit, I was sitting there waiting on my cell to be cleaned out. While they were cleaning my cell out, these two dudes got to fighting over in the corner, man. And uh, it was, it was, I mean, it, it was crazy because these guys, when they started fighting, nobody broke it up. No COs came running in there. They just fought and fought and fought. And, I mean, it was blood everywhere. It was crazy. It was like the fight went on for like 10 minutes before the, the cops finally got in there to break it up, or the correctional officers. Once they broke it up, I had to wait for like three more hours sitting there in the pod to get my cell taken care of before I could even move in there. What was it like seeing that fight? Did you expect to see that type of stuff getting there? Did you, were you scared seeing that? I don't know what I expected when I got to Greensville other than what I had heard about the place and that it was, uh, it was real violent. So I kind of got a taste of that when I first got off the bus, you know. I, got, I, I experienced the violence firsthand. From then on, it, like, it only increased. It got worse and worse as time went by. I remember one time at Greensville when uh, they let us out for rec call. I was on the fourth floor. We had to go down the back steps in order to get to the rec yard. They, they always let out the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, like that in order and we were the last ones to get let out. When we were walking down the back steps, I stepped over the top of this guy, man, that was laying there bleeding, that had been stabbed in the back stairwell. And I wanted to stop and help the guy, man. One of my buddies, man, told me, no, don't stop, man, don't, don't do nothing, don't stop and help him, because you might be the next one to get stabbed up. In prison, when you see things like that happening, you, uh, I, it's best just to keep it moving, mind your own business, because uh, you don't want to get into other people's business or whatever they've got going on. That's a good way to get yourself hurt, and I mean hurt real bad. The thing about the stairwells in Greensville is that, you know, there, there's no cameras in there. There's, there's no guards and no cameras, so nobody can see anything. So when most of the time when something bad is going to happen, it's going to happen in one of the stairwells in the back or one of the stairwells in the front. 
because nobody can stop it, nobody can see it, and nobody can help you. Were you ever scared inside of these stairwells, fearing that something could happen to you? Hell yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 I ran parlay tickets for a buddy of mine at Greensville. So uh, I, I, at times I accumulated a lot of money. I, I was always on the lookout. I, I'm a, I, I want to say this, that the, I had three people that I ran with all the time. And we were together all the time because it was uh, for our own protection, basically. You know, we were friends, but we also took care of each other. We looked out for each other because that's how you had to roll there. So I was always on the lookout, always expecting trouble because I always had lots of cigarettes and money in my cell. I was always looking to get robbed or anything. And at any time, you know, somebody might run up on you, three or four people run up on you and try to, you know, stab you up or whatever and rob you and take everything you got. And let's talk about the parlay tickets a little bit for those who might not know what this is. Obviously, this pertains to gambling in prison and betting on, you know, sports, but what kind of tickets did you deal with football tickets, NASCAR. I ran parlay tickets for a buddy of mine. I don't want to call his name. He, he put me on when I first got at Greensville because I've known him for a while. And uh, he had an opening on his parlay squad. So he, he put me on with his parlay ticket. I was basically a runner for the uh, institutional bookie. And the institutional bookie is the guy that ran the parlay. And I was basically a ticket runner for him. And what that is is uh, betting on betting on um, with odds on um, football, basketball. Now every sporting event that is televised, boxing, everything. Any sporting event that was televised, there was tickets out for it. And this guy obviously made a lot of money. Yeah, my buddy made a whole lot of money doing that. Oh yeah, I made a lot of money doing it too though. So, you know, I, I didn't have any, any help or any income coming in from the street, but during my stay at Greensville, I didn't need any. You know, it's really weird because, you know, I'm, I'm in Greensville for a robbery charge. The crazy part is that during my five years in Greensville, I'm quite sure I saw at least 20 robberies go on in there. And um, the majority of the robberies happened in the front stairwell. People coming back from the commissary with four or five commissary bags full of goodies or whatever they got. And people that are actually guys, three or four guys with knives in the stairwells with pillowcases over their heads with eye holes cut in them. And that's how they were robbing people, man. And you didn't even know who they were. If you had to go to the commissary by yourself and come back by yourself, your ass was getting robbed. What was one of the craziest robberies that you saw take place at Greensville? I think one of the craziest things I've ever seen at Greensville when uh, these two guys, and I don't think nobody still knows who they were, but they were hooded all up. They ran up in this dude's cell and beat him with locks and socks. And they beat him for like a good 20 or 30 minutes, I think. And then they every, he cleaned his whole cell out. They took everything he had. He had like five or $600 worth of cigarettes and you know different types of commissary items that he had that they robbed and took all of it. Did you ever have any problems with this where people were trying to approach you? Did you ever have a situation where someone tried to rob you or were you ever robbed there? No, I was never robbed at Greensville. Um, like I said, I had a few people that I ran away, ran around with that were, uh, that were really good dudes and pretty solid stand-up guys. They always had my back. So I, didn't, I really didn't have any problems other than the fact that I did have a guy change a parlay ticket up on me one time and just the way that you got to do it, you use a light in your cell to put your ticket up on it and recopy the ticket and then change the numbers on it so you'll turn your numbers into winning numbers. And then that's what he did, and he beat the parlay man for 15 cartons of cigarettes. You know, I kind of I kind of caught a little shit behind that from the parlay dude, but that's the only really screwed up thing that happened, you know, during my time of running parlay tickets there. What about the gangs there? Like, how bad were the gangs? Did you have to be in a gang while there? You know, at Greensville, there had there was like at least maybe five or six different gangs there. All kinds of people. Uh, you know, 
GDs, Bloods, Crips, AB, Aryan Brotherhood, Nation of Islam. They all hated each other. <laughs> I mean, pretty much anyway. So, you know, it, for the better part, it, mostly everybody in Greensville was in some type of gang. I wasn't. Um, and the few people that I ran around with weren't in a gang affiliated either. People prey on the weak, you know, and and people have a tendency to prey on weak people, and, and when and when you're incarcerated, and um, I've never been one of the weak people, and I try to associate myself and hang out with people that are of like-minded as I am, that aren't weak and can stand up for themselves, and usually that eliminates problems. Were there any times where you did have to stand up for yourself at Greensville? Any type of fighting that you had to do there? Yeah, I had a whole lot of fights at Greensville. Greensville was a really disrespectful penitentiary. Not everybody, but a lot of people in Greensville were disrespectful. And a whole lot of times, you know, in order to maintain your respect and in order to, I say, in order to set the record straight, you've got to do what you got to do. So it was quite a few times where I had to jump on people, and I didn't. I didn't win. I didn't win all of them. I mean, not by far. I won my share, and I did enough damage in in what I had to do when I had to do it to make sure that I didn't get with a whole lot. I think one of the craziest fights I was at Greensville was a a little mini ride inside of the kitchen. We was at the table eating, and this gay dude's boyfriend come up to the table and said something to my buddy about disrespecting his people because my buddy had told him to get the hell out of space about something. I'm not quite sure what that was. But um, my buddy's like, yeah, I told him to get the hell out of my face and you need to get the hell out of my face too. So and the dude hit him and my buddy jumped up and rumbling and then, man, it was like, it was crazy because it was instantly like, and the dude was black and you know, we were all white and it was like, so that's a racial thing automatically. So instantly it was like, man, it was like eight, eight or nine people, you know, on both sides in the kitchen rumbling because, you know, when my buddy jumped up to fight the dude, two of his buddies jumped up and then everybody at my table jumped up and, you know, several other people. And next thing you know, man, it's, it's a war in there. It, it didn't last real long because um, everybody kind of did their thing and then hauled ass, you know, to get back and get out of the way, you know, because there were so many COs in there. And all the COs were running around trying to grab everybody that was fighting and trying to lock people up and all that shit. I just happened, I happened to get away with that. I, I eased back to my table and sat down. And, and a couple of my buddies eased back and sat down. But the one guy, one of my buddies, the one that got hit, man, he got his whole eye socket cracked. And um, he had to go to the hospital and shit. And, he got, he got hurt pretty bad. I remember this guy that was in the pod with us. Um, he was a white guy, kind of younger, not, not really too young, but he was, I don't know, he was kind of like a, uh, more to himself than anything. He really didn't like to talk to too many people or anything. And uh, he didn't associate himself with a whole lot of other people, but he was one of the guys that got taken advantage of. A few of the gang members pulled up on him and told him that, uh, you know, that he's gonna start paying them every week to stay in that pod if he wanted to stay in there. So he wanted to fight about it, so they beat him up pretty bad, and then they still extorted him. They extorted him every week because he stayed in the pod, and he paid every week, like, I'm not sure, I'm going on, what I'm thinking is like, that he paid like $10 a week just to stay in that pod be able to stay in that cell. And there, were, there was a lot more extortion going on, things like that. And, um, but it, it was all preying on the weak, you know? It, it was all preying on people that are, that are, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to word it, that are, um, I don't know, individuals that just, most individuals are just young and that stay to themselves and you know, they don't really know a whole lot about the system. Did you ever see people who were scared to be there? Yeah, I I, see, I saw people come in a whole lot who were scared to be there. They come in, some, I've seen people just come in and set their box down 
and go straight up to the, the cage where it is. It's a booth, guard booth, and tell the guard in the cage, man, you know, um, you got to put me in the hole. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't be here. I can't stay here. You know, so we call that checking in. I've seen a whole lot of checking in. I've seen people check in after getting beat up. You know, I guess not not wanting to fight anymore or not wanting to get beat up anymore or whatever. Just scared, basically. You know, I've heard that Greensville is a pretty sweet prison to be at. I know it's got a lot of violence. I know it's got a lot of gangs. I've never been there personally. But, you know, as a convict rabbit, obviously that's what you are. Would you consider Greensville a sweet prison to do time at or would you consider it, you know, a pretty bad prison to be at? For me personally, with me being a convict and uh, old school, basically knowing things, you know, knowing the ropes, knowing what's going on, how to do things. Um, Greensville was like probably one of the best places I've ever done time. And the reason for that is that um, once you got it, once you got your name out there on the yard and people knew who you were and you got to know people, you know, you could get anything you wanted. I mean, literally, you know, I'm, I was a drug addict, so I, I had access to anything I wanted. You could get weed, you could get heroin, you could get alcohol, you could get cocaine. It didn't make no difference what it was, it's all there. Rabbit, you mentioned that you're a convict. You mentioned that, you know, you, you could find your way inside of this prison fairly well. You've done a lot of time and that probably helps. But, you know, what if somebody was going there who had never done time before? You know, what would you suggest that they do in an effort to be able to try to survive this prison? This might sound, you know, this might sound kind of bad, maybe. I don't know. Um, but the truth of the matter is that if you're going to a max prison and and, and you got to do some time, and, um, and you're not really familiar with the system, you don't know what's going on, I will, my suggestion to you, the best thing that you could do is try to get in with like-minded people. Try to get in, I'm not saying get in a gang, because you know, that's, that's got its downfalls too. But my suggestion would be to get in with people that are on the same level you're on, like-minded people, and try to get you a group of people around you so that you don't have to sweat, you know, being alone. Because you can't do time in prison alone. Do you think, obviously, this wouldn't be the last time that you went to prison, your, your experience at Greensville, but do you think that you learned anything at Greensville? And I don't mean like, did you learn your lesson? Did you learn anything while serving time at this prison? or throughout any of the time that you've served that, that you carry with you out here in society? Any kind of life lessons, things like that? You know, the one thing that I've learned throughout my incarceration that I keep with me today, continuously, is respect. Because respect is one of the biggest things in the whole prison system. If you don't, number one, you gotta respect yourself. Number two, you gotta respect everybody around you, no matter who they are. And if, if you're disrespectful, then you're gonna get what's coming to you. You know, that's just the way it is. So to me, one of the key things that I latched on to years ago that I learned that I still hold on to now is respect for everybody.